like you said, is totally going to be interesting here because we could have anything and everything. So we're probably going to see a whole lot of looting as we go around just to try to build up some money so you could afford that there crystal sword. And we've got a party of white mages. <laughs> Rosa and Porum are our first starting pair. I gotta love it. I mean, Rosa's awesome. You always want to see her. So you can't complain about that. Get her just a, like a bow and arrow and you can take out some stuff. So that's a great way to start. And plus, with push B to jump, you can jump over uh, stuff in Zot and actually run up and get those characters if you need them. So if you need somebody to do some attacking, you can always take care of that. We have a good white mage and we have Rosa. <laughs> I'm just oh. kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, we'll see. We're sitting at T standard. So going to watery pass isn't going to net you any better uh, probability of loot and it would be going to Baron or whatnot. So we'll probably see all four runners to say, well, I thought we were going to see all four runners head to Baron. That's tr generally the traditional play, but because we have push me to jump on, you can do stuff as you see Gambit doing. Baron Castle, a whole lot of chest up in here that you would normally have to actually clear the Baron cutscene for. You don't have to worry about that. Now, we also have C relaxed, which means we could see edge or uh Fusoya in a spot that doesn't necessarily require key item we see edge sitting in the barren end so even more incentive to try to get some really good weapons here for that edge who can carry you through that early game yeah absolutely and since those items are going to be able to available in any shops and with uh t standard you can pretty much get them anywhere you just you know go to any place where there's good clusters of treasure chests and stuff and you know, pick as much as you can and hope for some good stuff. But yeah, I mean, Edge obviously starts out extremely strong, so that would be an awesome thing. The world just opened up quite a bit <laughs> because the free key item we got at Bedward was the Magma Key. So that gives us access to the underground, uh, even more treasure and even more shops. Uh, at this point, you know, the runners are going to be doing a little bit of you know, resource gathering, because that, while that Masamune in the shop is really good, it's also like a bajillion GP. All right, not that much, it's a lot. Um, so yeah, you gotta be careful. Uh, do you wanna spend too much time looting or you gonna know, just try to push through it? Now, Cossack is doing something interesting here. Commander just found a crystal sword in, uh, in Mist village i don't know what that cost was but it was definitely available for sale if nothing else <laughs> i want to say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of a uh, 200,000 gp or something like that uh wow. yeah it, it's it's a lot but i mean it's a crystal sword man it, it's the strongest weapon in the game assuming we find a cecil now cossack is heading into zot uh with the jump flag, you can actually skip the boss fights and just get the characters here. It's a little bit, you know, time consuming, uh, but especially when you don't have free items on, uh, or I'm sorry, free characters, it's a good way to get some characters and it's going to get him what would have been more information, but we have free items. So that Demas being there isn't as big a deal. Gambit though is going straight to the Baronet fight. Whoa, check that out. We got a Fusoi on Dr. Cossack's screen along with a Palum, so there is some serious magic action going on now. I am very interested to see who the second boss that we that Gambit gets trying to leverage that early edge. But the second boss here is about 4,000 HP and it hits like a truck for these characters given the levels they're at. It's really slow. Uh, and it's free. But it's free. <laughs> oh man! Wow. How about that? Actually, it's. I mean, it's not completely free because those hit points are real low. But he, curing up should be fine. But yeah, that's that's a free edge basically right there. That that's that's a money play right there. It's gonna get a key item. He's gonna get arguably the strongest early game character in the game. Uh, it's 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 a little bit of a risk because you pull something kind of mean there, then you're in trouble. But I, I guess the only downside to this spot, uh, this particular boss being here, is that traditionally when you can't do the damage and this team cannot do damage right now, 
uh, you have to wait it out. Uh, after X amount of time goes by, they'll do the cutscene that's intended for the King Queen Evelyn spot. Unfortunately, this is one of the most relatively slow parts of the game, so I guess the downside here is that they're going to be sitting there. Gambit's going to be sitting there a little while waiting for that cutscene to kick in. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are worse things, though. That, you know, at least you get the edge. The downside, like with, with Fu, which is the other one that's actually uh, easily available, and, and Dr. Kossack got it, is it's powered by uh, bosses, and if you're jumping over bosses and skipping them, then you're not going to be getting nearly as powerful with Fu. Uh, he's still got a lot of good utility and everything, and depending on where those spells come out, because every time you kill a boss, you get uh, it's three new spells uh, at random from his pool, I think it's random. And uh, you don't know what you're going to get, so you could end up with, you know, some really good utility spells or some powerful spells early on. It's, it's tough to say, but uh, it's not as it's not as obviously awesome as it would be in non push to jump flags. Yeah, it's, it's totally one of the most interesting aspects of Push Me Jump is that it's one of the few free enterprise flag sets we've seen that actually effectively nerfs Fu, and you might not want to have him on your team. Um, and kaboom, Gambit just got required Twin Harp from that Baron Inn, so that is huge. Uh, and with Edge, he probably could just run up right now and grab it uh, and get some music hopefully pretty soon. So that'll be really yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a tough spot to take on super early. Edge can probably carry it through. You're looking at about 6,000 HP. Uh, it's magic defenses through the roof, whatever is there. But I, I think you'll see Gambit try to get a few more levels. But finding that right off the bat is super important. Uh, Commander Landhart is heading into the Antlion Cave, so we'll get a first look there. Kostak is continuing the idea of getting as many characters as possible. Is going to actually check out the Hook um, Cave, the Hook character, and looks like the Luton Cave Evblon, while still having the Magma Key. So, hoping this pays out. Sid being there, not so much. And oh, look who's on Mount Hobbs. Oh, you hate to see it. <laughs> Golbez, I love it. I love it. Uh, and also, actually, wait, Antidale. Uh, just checked out the uh, summon monster spots, and I think what was it? It was uh, one of the Mylons was on the right one. Uh, shoot, what was the left one now? Well, I don't think he's gonna see him take them on. Pretty much the only ones bosses you can fight uh, would be the parents, which you just saw, and Bahamut, enough star bales. But finding sirens there is a big deal can use those sirens provided he has a way to kill the yellow dragon eggs that he'd be summoning. It's going to give his party an incredible boost. Um, Gambit picking up, well, taking on this Golbez fight is a little bit of a risk. Um, as, as you can see, he's paralyzing the party. He's going to rain down spells. It's also a pretty time-consuming fight. You're looking at a minimum of around a minute 50. And since you've already got Edge, I'm not entirely certain Yang is going to add too much to the party. But it, it, this is a pretty good experience spot for these levels. That's true. And, and honestly, I mean, maybe Punch Mage Yang is not like as super powerful. But I mean, you know, if you just need a little more uh, physical DPS going on, it's not too bad. But yeah, obviously going through Golbez takes some time. And I'm sorry, the uh, Leviathan spot was uh, Karate, so not at all free unless you have uh, Cecil, Ooh. in which case it would be. But yeah, that, he's got punch real hard there, so that's scary. So we get a defense sword out of Antlion Cave, uh, courtesy of Commander Leonhardt. That's uh, a very good weapon, and if we see a cane or a Cecil, which would be the two they can use it, that would be fantastic. But we haven't seen one yet, and we've gotten most of the free character spots out of there. It looks like Anadel is trying to get as most advantage as we can out of these gated shots. Well, I guess they're technically not gated, but just getting as much shopping as he can, trying to find those couple items that'll carry him through the seed. Artemis Bow is absolutely fantastic for Rosa. It's, it's her best attacking bow at the cost of a little bit of magic. And hey, all the Rosa gear. We've got a white shirt too. Ooh, white shirts are awesome. That is her best uh, piece of armor. So yeah, can't complain about that. And we got a good old Rosa starter kit sitting in Dwarf Castle. So, uh, Cossack is heading back into uh, Underground. Is going to utilize that Magma Key. Masamune was in the Agar Weapon Shop, which is one. It's one of those things where one of the nice parts about Push B to Jump isn't just that you get to skip 
a lot of uh, places and a lot of boss fights. You also get to jump over those annoying NPCs that seem to always want to get in your way, and Agar is full of them. Oh, and don't forget Troya. Don't forget that lady that's always at the exit. And you know, uh, it's the worst. But you just say, screw that. I'm good jumping. All right, well, Commander Lanehart is going to also take the risk of seeing who the second boss is and is going to be rewarded with an edge uh, because that second fight is also going to be free. Anadel is making use of the uh, sirens you picked up and one of the side benefits of all the shopping you did, he found a coffin. So that's going to one hit KO, give you quick 34,000. And now our white mages are sitting at the mid 20s with one siren fight. So that's going to that's going to jumpstart the early game quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And the most important thing, Porum, the, who can actually get this spell before Earth Crystal has exit. So now you can get out of stuff real fast. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, and it, or, yeah, because Rosa doesn't actually learn exit by virtue of levels. You have to clear Zot first. And that's not something these, that our racers are going to want to do right away. Uh, in fact, in Cossack's case, he may not do it at all because he got the characters from there already. Uh, so getting access to exit via Siren is, is going to probably save a good minute given the amount of checks you might have liked to have had that before you go to the Fey March, but that's what the sirens were, so nothing you can do about that. Now, it looks to me like Annadale has the pan, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure where that came from. Was that the free item in uh, Fey March? Because I just saw he got a Dragoon Spear after hitting Yang, so he's gonna do the single Fabul. Gotta love it. Oh, somewhere out there, Rivers is nodding his head in approval, and yeah, he won't especially given like the amount of free checks that you have here uh, putting off Fabul Antlion Cave and Fabul especially for that reason you can get three he's going to get three free key item well not free we got to see who the boss is here we're going to get three key item checks two from Sheila and one from the boss and you know we, we don't need that many items required and we already know where one of them is so this could this could unlock quite a bit Oh, and we got the Luka key, so that's required, and an Earth Crystal. That's, oh wait, that's not required, however, but, uh, but yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Earth Crystal will, doesn't unlock anything per se, as far as uh, key item checks go, because we can just jump into Zot. It does unlock the treasury, but we are sitting on T standard, so uh, it's unweighted, it's not going to be that much better. I mean, it's six it, you know it's a whole bunch of treasure chests that's never a bad thing but it's not like super good that you would get on a weighted flag set so i'm not gonna see it as much and kind of hate to see a free fight here um but that's what this is the guards are gonna go down in one guy drum there it is the next guard's gonna run away and that's that oh is that an ogopoko on gambit's side what is he facing right now Ah, uh, it's too. Uh, we need uh We need the nope rope uh, emote from uh, Gundam Pilot Spaz's chat. Oh, I love that. That's such a good emote. Ah, oh, the best. Well, Protectoring yeah. was the last thing from from Fabul, but uh, Luca was was Sheila one, so that's required. So we've already seen two required items in the uh, the Twin Harp and Luca key. So. Uh, we are on our way to knowing a lot of this. Let's see, what else do we need? I guess we still need uh, 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 moon access, so that's pretty much the big thing. And we need hook in order, and a rat tail, obviously, to be able to trade them. Yeah, so I take back about what I said about not even a lot, needing a lot of key items. We need five of them, <laughs> but we found two. Uh, so at that, when you when you go into a flag set where you require a bunch of key items, you kind of want to go quality or quantity over following a chain if you can open up like a large swath of checks and you know don't worry about necessarily finishing a particular quest chain that you're on and just get as many as you can as efficiently as you can uh Leonhard is going to give us our first look into what's at baron castle by virtue of jumping where you see who's taken over the baron throne and there's a moon boss there that's the Ogopogo. That was there, one that I okay. just did. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, yeah, I mixed that up. 
Oh, I see Gambit actually uh, died on the first attempt, and he's going back and trying again. Because this is real spicy. Ogopogo is nasty. Not only does he do these big waves where he does a percentage of your health, uh, the first, each wave is 25% of your total max health. Uh, but then he's also real punchy, and that's not pleasant at all. So you really have to keep cures up constantly so that you don't run out of health and stuff. And Ogopogo in this spot, I mean, that's, you know, pretty decent number of hit points considering... They're not, you know, these folks aren't super strong just yet. Yeah, the white mages don't really have access to particularly strong party-wide healing. Uh, I I know we prefer to use it on a character, but this could be a decent time to dart that defense sword we got from Antlion Cave. That's one possibility. Uh, but yeah, Ogopogo is not friendly in any spot he is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we got Anadale and Cossacker. Well, Anadale just wrapped up the M Lion Cave, so he's got that defense sword. Uh, and making use of the starter kit, I believe this starter kit gives you some J items to go with. So, yeah, Gaia Drums, Big Bombs. It, this is a one turn fight. Uh, Cossack is, might start to see him take a few more boss spots than. You would or otherwise normally see to try to get some value out of that food get him some really good spells early on uh, now it's it won't help that much with ogo unless it's nuke because ogo counters every spell with blaze which is another percentage on top of the percentage attacks that he already does Ooh, and we got commander took out ogopogo though so we're going to see what the item at baron is real soon although we have to wait for the little cutscene but that's all right yeah, if you're if you're feeling dicey, you can use a com if you use a kamikaze to finish that off. You actually skip that, but not with Ogo being here, you don't take any chances like that. Uh, let's see who the character is. It is well, we get some use out of that defense or real quick. Uh, that is yeah, Dark Knight. Sorry, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, that's DKC, so, you know, that obviously gives a bit of incentive to jump over and do ordeals. Jump, ha ha ha. I didn't mean that. But uh, uh, the nice thing is there are three bosses in ordeals, and you can actually jump the first two, and the third one is uh, pretty much free, uh, unless it's a wyvern or something. But you can always save and change your battle speed. Shouldn't be a problem. So getting, uh, getting that defense sword online with Cecil is going to be super fast and super powerful. That's a really good item. And then if I'm running the seed, I hit the boss tiles on the way back. <laughs> always, uh, always. But yes, with push B to jump, Mount Ordeals is much less of an ordeal. It's just that one boss you have to face with 1,000 HP. Uh, not going to be an issue, especially with those of our racers that have uh, edge in the party. It always brings a smile to my face to see any runner using the jump flag to jump behind the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Holy bananas, did you see that uh, in the armor shop there, in the Baron armor shop? There was an adamant armor for sale. However, it was 500,000 gold pieces. I don't know if you're ever going to come across that kind of cash without an uh, item duping glitch turned on, so yikes. Probably not. Fun fun fact, if you actually try to purchase 99 of them, the price will say too much GP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figures, why not, yeah. All right, so it looks like Anadel is going to also dance with the Ogo. Uh, Cossack is wrapping up that Fabul, so we're going to get the one-stop Fabul for him. Gambit is heading up to Ordeals, and it looks like we got a Sand Ruby from... Uh, for, was that from Baron, I think? Yeah, because that's what Gambit has. That was yeah. So, Free Cane. Uh, we did get a Dragoon Spear out of the Sylph Cave, so that's... a that between that and the defense sword on uh, Cecil, we've got our melee attack pretty much taken care of. Yeah, well, this is going to be some serious punching. And uh, honestly, I th saw somebody, there was a Thunderclaw. So, you know, if you have a Yang, I, I mean, anything. There's so much uh, DPS going on here. And since the Sirens are online, like, you're going to be able to jump over and get those... Uh, get those eggs ready and, and you know level up pretty fast here even before you can go to the moon and kind of just take out everything on earth before you even go up there if you need if you need to now what is interesting about how the parties can diverge um, and 
your party composition can very and your strategy really for the entire seed is going to somewhat be dictated by the first five or six characters you get Cossack decided to go into Zot, found Fu, and now got Palum from uh, Baron. So is probably going to, or er, not from B, he has Palum. So is going to be looking at a very mage heavy seed. On the other hand, uh, we look at the route that Gambit and Commander Lanehart and they'll take, where they've got Edge, they've got Defense Sword Cecil, there's a Yang if you like punching. And, you know, Kane is sitting there with uh, the Sand Ruby that is going to be in a spot where the uh, most of the racers are going to take. So there's going to be a pretty interesting comparison to how Cossack ends up playing this seed out versus how the other three racers. And on top of that, uh, ordeals is required because the item there is the rat tail. So everybody's going to be coming here at some point. Uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty spicy. Yeah, five, five, uh, a five key item requirement. You're not going to leave a whole lot on the table in what you would consider to be a sphere one location. Um, yeah, so I think pretty much every runner is going to get or go through ordeals. Uh, just don't jump on the way out. <laughs> you have to be careful. Uh, one of the things that I learned. Uh, when you get push feet to jump, it's so fun to do that you're jumping all the time and everywhere. And if you jump out right at the exit, the tiles outside take you outside, but the next tile actually functions as a return door. So instead of exiting ordeals, it takes you back up a level. I'm like, ah, oh, no, I don't want to stay in ordeals. Like, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, in a lot of dungeons, there are these, what are they called? Minus tiles, I believe. And you can kind of jump, uh, you know, right on the edge of the dungeon, and what it will do is it will automatically drop you down a floor, so you don't have to do all the running out and everything, which makes things super quick. Ooh, what is Antidale up to? We got some music going on, yes! That's exciting. All right, we're gonna get our first look at what the tune is, uh, and yeah, I, I, we'll see. He's, his party's now at the point, especially post-Siren, but even after just getting the edge and just getting a few levels. Not a lot of bosses here that are gonna pose too much of a threat, uh, but yeah, we're gonna get the cutscene head on. Um, yeah, interesting fact about the return tile, if you ever notice how sometimes you cast warp and it takes you back out of the room and other times it seems to take you forward and then back, uh, that has to do with whether or not it's something that actually functions as a return tile. All right, and tunes are coming, so. Let us sit and listen for a moment. Enjoy. So we know what the reward is that we're getting for beating the Dark Elf here. It's going to be 15 silver. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, that is Gato's theme from Chrono Trigger, uh, if you're not familiar with it. But at the beginning of the game, you have a little robot that gives you little free points for like a little uh, amusement thing. Oh, and the Legend Sword is the key item out of that. So uh, with the Cecil, if you end up finding that adamant, that would not be too bad getting an Excal. Now, okay, Hanadel's showing off a, a, a particular <laughs> uh, glitch. Where, or, okay, see, I, I'm not totally, this is why I call Hanadel the Jump King. Uh, actually jumps out, is taken back to Bedward, and then is taken back to the Crystal Room, and then Cave Magnus and out, so doesn't actually need to fight the boss here. I. It's the first time I've seen that, so we'll see if uh, any of our other runners actually remember that. Otherwise, Anadel might have just saved a couple minutes. Yeah, absolutely. That's really, really convenient. I've definitely seen that before. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah, you jump into Eddie's bed. It's 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 quite an interesting little glitch there. But but it, yeah, absolutely saves some time if you know, because yeah, the objective is just to get the music. It is not to fight the boss. So that's definitely gonna get oh that's an hourglass three and some illusions and lifes that is a pretty spicy item shop right when was the last time you saw an hourglass three and an hourglass one anyway oh and an, an 
and speaking of hourglass wands they're yeah they're in the other shop so that's wow that's really nice yeah hourglasses are awesome because uh for anything that doesn't have a boss bit pretty much uh you can use that item and it will stop them in their tracks pretty much for the entire battle so it makes a lot of fights trivial or parts of fights trivial uh so those are super super yeah they're so good that the order of the shops that ended will take almost completely baited him into buying a bunch of hourglass threes and then going into the shop right next to it and finding much cheaper but just as effective hourglass oh snap antidale is going to the uh troya treasury now of course this is t standard so it's not going to be anything i don't think it's anything better than normal but uh this is such a good cluster of chests it's great to check so we shall see what we Oh, and right off the bat, we see the inventory boss fight. Uh, inventory is full, so it's probably going to be at least throwing as many things in here as he can and pushing a whole bunch of that R button, really only looking for maybe five to ten particular things. Uh, armor, for the most part, really, is would be what our party seems to be missing. And if you're keeping that Aegis shield, then yeah, you're looking for armor. Yeah, honestly, this is uh, this treasury is kind of hot trash. There wasn't a whole lot there, but a couple pieces of armor. But you know, what if it's not T Pro, if it's T Standard, you're not going to get anything better than any other uh, place where there's chests. So. And he does well. I mean, no treasury, even a T Wildest treasury, isn't going to give you enough to sell for that adamant armor. But it's going to give you a pretty good amount of money to at least buy the more expensive armor pieces that you generally wouldn't think of buying otherwise. I can't remember the last time I actually bought Dragoon armor, but if you're sitting on 150k, then, you know, sure, it's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, looks like we're getting oh, and we round got two. Redux of music, actually, two of them, sorry. Oh, we didn't hear that one too long. <laughs> That's too bad. One of the most interesting things with push B to jump, uh, especially if you're in places like Zod and stuff, you'll see these little square tiles on top of uh, roofs of buildings and or little rooms and stuff, and you can actually jump on top of those. So they're, they're special little tiles you can actually get on. And you'll see really crazy, awesome routing where people will like jump off of the, off of the roofs of things and get around. It's pretty impressive. So, totally appreciate Commander Leonhardt's decision of routing here. Didn't actually check Bedward at the beginning of the game, and decided to wait until after acquiring the Twin Harp to make that check then. So didn't actually need to make, or to go all the way back to Bedward to get that key item, which, Magma Key, that's important. So that's, that's some pretty nice routing there. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't even know you could do that. I'm learning something new every day. That's really cool. Uh, I mean, Magma Key is maybe not as interesting here as it would otherwise be, because the nice thing about Push B to Jump is not only can you jump in dungeons, but you can jump in the overworld. And what that offers you, if you, uh, I think a couple of folks have, have checked already, you can just jump right into Ebelin Cave, which will give you access to the underground that way. And instead of having to fight those two nasty bosses at the end, you can actually jump over them and just get immediately underground. So... Underground is, is free on push B to jump, which is which really, really interesting. It opens up routing a lot more than uh, any any other flag set, really, so it makes things a lot spicier, and you see a lot of different divergent routes from all the, all the runners when that happens. Yeah, Cossack showing how dangerous it can be if you decide to wage battle with Ogo by way of magic, <laughs> eating Blaze on top of the waves, but still manages to get through. Uh, will get yeah, Cecil here now. Interesting decision. Uh, is, does Cossack stick with the mage theme party or want to get use out of that defense sword? I would imagine Forms. Well, yeah, I figured Forum is probably the character that you get rid of. Yeah, no, no offense to Forum. Uh, she's got not the best end game situation. Uh, you know, she does well early on with spells and things, but uh, she, her hit points do not get high at all. You have to really level her pretty high to make her. Uh, decently viable in a Z fight without, you know, having to play a little spicy. And it looks like Antidale is, actually took on uh, the boss in Zot, so he is going to see what this key item is. 
Interestingly enough, it was the Water Hag. So had Cossack decided to actually take the boss fight there, could have cleared it early. And I totally missed what that was. That was an Excal. Holy snap. Spicy. That's really, really good. Did, uh, wait, did Andadale? Yeah, he has a Cecil. So I think it's about time for him to go to ordeals. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be great. Yeah, that's that. That's superpower right there. So X. Yeah, the, I would imagine a trip to ordeals is in short order. It is going to do uh looks like might at, uh, check the Odin spot. His crew did learn nuke immediately after the uh, uh, the Zot boss fight. So there's a chance that this boss is actually completable. Although it's Kanazo, so that oh. could be difficult. Oh wow, yeah, I just, I just got a little sick there seeing that. That's that's nasty. Uh, Kanazo is going to crush your face if you're not careful here. So that's spicy. It looks like he's trying to go for it, so that's pretty impressive. But I guess Nuke will make anything possible. Uh, but yeah, Kanazo's wave is going to do a damage. It's, it's I think it's is it uh, based on the hit points of the Kanazo in that spot? Is that how yes. the damage is? Yeah, it's 4% of its current HP. So at a spot here that's sitting around 30k, you're looking at around 1200 damage to the entire party. But that nuke spell, especially if you have uh, like a good weapon to boost his black magic stat, is going to get a pretty good chunk of that out of there. So between that and, you know, uh, edges casting, he got the wave down to about 800. But this is where it gets a little tricky. The party's still pretty low health. If that second wave, but yeah, I think that might be that's that. done for. Yeah, reset. Yeah, that that's unfortunate. That's a that's such a tough boss in that spot. I wouldn't be surprised if if he fades it, but we'll see. Oh, I didn't even realize Dark Knight Cecil can use the cursed ring. I don't know. I, I guess I I just always make him a paladin. I had no idea. <laughs> It's, it's a nice niche strategy, but it's also a little dangerous because if you leave the Cursed Ring on Cecil, on Dark Knight Cecil, and then you go into Ordeals and he does the uh, character change, bye-bye Cursed Ring. And it looks like, yeah, he was doing a little bit of updating here. So he's got the Thunder Claw on Edge, which is going to make things a lot easier in terms of doing damage because he also had a Bacchus Wine. So he'll be hitting for some serious damage with Edge right now, plus with the Nuke. So... Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit different the second time around. But... Yeah, I think you're going to see Nuke, uh, Bacchus, the White Mages will throw a, uh, a Thor Rage to try to get the first one out of the way. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I think uh, the wave might not be able to be stopped here. Yeah, it looks like he's too fast here, just in terms of, like, the levels and stuff are just not awesome yet, so it's real hard to dodge that first. Oh, and, and over here on Gambit's side, you can see one of the nice things about Push Me to Jump is you can actually jump in the middle of space in Fey March. There are spots where you can actually jump, like, between uh, the, the path on, like, uh, in, you know, invisible tiles, so it's kind of amusing to be able to jump around and you can kind of jump over to that free chest a little bit quick. <laughs> to quote Final Fantasy V, the laws of physics are broken. <laughs> so true, so true, I love it. So, all right, it looks like, uh, yeah, Fu doesn't have Cure 3 or Cure 4, although 500 per, that should be enough to just keep up. So now it's going to be Thunder, 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 Claw, Ho, and yeah, so it'll be a little slow going when he decides to hide in his shell. He's gonna looks like Anadel's trying to anticipate that with the nuke. Um, Cossack is now going to party that to party that level up to level that party up via a siren, a few sirens here, and also so nuke was at eleven hundred on foo, so that's actually really early. Yeah, that's that's not. I mean, you, you definitely want to see that because that's obviously his best defensive spell. Although he doesn't really have, or I'm sorry, offensive spell. He doesn't really have a lot of healing going on yet. But uh, but look, yeah, it's hiding in the shell. So this is this is game over for Kanazo. Let's see what goes on here. Now, one of one uh, one perennial question facing facing runners is when it comes to a particular boss fight, it's not always just a question of can I do it. It's also a question of, is it time efficient for me to do so? Um, 
is the past. So it's, you know, it's good. You're going to save some time in the end. But you did also invest five minutes into that fight. Uh, so, I mean, you, you have to walk this out, of course, in order to get value out of that pass. But it, it's always a difficult decision and sometimes a dicey one to just because you see a boss that you could beat, it may not always be time efficient to do so. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things I found, like, just, I mean, I'm still pretty new at this, but getting a little bit better is that I start getting a little better on bosses, and I'm like, ooh, I can take this boss on. The problem is it's going to be five minutes, and so you have to really think about, okay, is this actually time viable? You need to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. So, you know, sometimes you don't want to take that chance. Uh, and, you know, a pass isn't too bad. Obviously, you don't have to walk the moon, but honestly, it kind of hedges out because walking the moon probably would have been about as long since he had the reset and everything. So that's unfortunate, but at least he got the pass out of it. Yeah, it, it's one of those things you, you'll get from experience. Now, one nice nice thing about this is Anadel seeing Kainazo with Odin is probably thinking no one else is going to check this right away. Uh, and sure enough, we haven't seen any of our runners even sniff the Odin spot and even check to see who the boss was, much less actually take on the fight. In fact, the first new contact content we're getting right now, Cossack is taking on uh, Mob Bomb at Dwarf Castle, with, which with the wrong party can actually be pretty dicey, but it's not going to be a problem here. So, and managed, managed to catch it before the explosion, so you don't have to fight the second set of uh, little bombs, so that's pretty nice. But we'll see who the character is here, although I don't, don't really need a character at this point. Yeah, I, I I can't imagine any character that we're going to... I mean, I guess if you really want to do a moon slingshot, sure. But I, I've given sirens are available. I don't think that's it. Well, okay, if we had the spoon, this there would be consideration. Well, the nice thing is you can go and rescue uh, uh, Eddie. If so, if you do find the spoon, you want maybe find an adamant too, because he's pretty weak in the hit points. But yeah, if, the nice thing about the spoon flag is the spoon is 255 attack power. So you throw that thing on Eddie, and he is more powerful than anything. I throw on an adamant, he's even more powerful. It's it's pretty bonkers. Now, if you've watched a bunch of free enterprise streams, you're probably accustomed to demist granting an additional key item however that flag is traditionally taking off with push me to jump flags to avoid people constantly having to save scum and check bosses that they would have otherwise skipped so we don't actually get a bonus key item here what we do get is the ghost hand appearing and taking the crystal um, and we'll get to see the warp glitch here in action too oh yeah that's right uh, well, he has Luke key. I don't know if it's really that necessary, but he can do the, the warp glitch if he wants. So, and we got a hook required, so that is huge. So there's two reasons why I kind of would like to still take the warp glitch. Like you, like you said, we have to take that boss on anyway. Um, if it's a key item, and if it's a transitional key item, there's a pretty good chance we can put that off because it's out of logic and it's going to be behind another required item. You might not see it. The other thing is it might get you closer to 10 before we even go to see that Luka key. And if you want to take a gamble on possibly leveling up uh, your party as fast as you can, you kind of want to get to 10 as fast as you can. And we're already sitting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 key items as is. Actually, that's nine. Nine. Yeah, I, I can count. <laughs> it's okay. Numbers are hard. So, theoretically, that might have given him key item 10. Now, we might get that from the rat tail, which we're about to turn in, which is also required. Um, so, I think Cossack is really just looking at the darkness crystal as far as, like, required. Yeah, that's the only thing I think that is right. Yeah, cause Hook, Rat, Luca, uh, Music, and yeah, Darkness. So that's that's it, yeah. And a Pigtail. So hey, that's super cool because now you just got a free Adamant armor. <laughs> yeah, I, we're, we're part, our party is pretty much set, good to go. Um, Adamant armor is not just one of the most, not just the most broken thing in this game. It might be one of the most 
broken items in the entire series. Uh, if you it had, if you equip it, your defense is through the roof. Any physical attack on a back row character is only going to do one damage. Fire, ice, and lightning immunity. Uh, Minerva from FF6, eat your heart out. And heart is even better. Ooh, I think Inven might uh, have some have some words for you with that one. <laughs> Alright, so Cossack now at this point only needs the Darkness Crystal. Um, so we, Cossack knows Moon is not going to be required. Uh, therefore, let's clear out as much of the overworld as we can. Sadly, it looks like other than the requirement, Moon is actually haunted, which is a little disappointing, but if you have the Moon is haunted emote, let, <laughs> let's see some of those in chat. I think that's actually a, a FFC. Oh, uh, uh, sure that's here, an FFC one. Yeah, bummer. I know. <laughs> so it looks like Andadale is going into the Luca Cave right now. So we are going to see. Oh, and hey, Doc Cossack's also going to do music now. So we'll get another quick little, perhaps interlude in here, a couple seconds of music. Yeah, that will be our fourth music. Gambit looks like it's taking on one of the Fey March bosses. A uh, Milan by himself is not that difficult um, he's going to counter with lit one and the magic here is pretty good so it'll do some damage and then it'll occasionally do physical attack but this is another case where it may be doable but it, it's it can be very time inefficient uh, he's going to counter everything with lit one and that can add up if you're trying to have an attrition battle i mean ask anyone who's fought a pale dim with a low level party how that goes Oh gosh, yeah, that's the worst. You get those counter slows, like it takes a month to get through. But if on the flip side, if this has the darkness crystal, Gambit's got a pretty significant advantage. And Ooh, spicy! Antidale with the Wyvern at Luca. That's pretty gross. That's super gross. But he does manage to get a Star Veil up, so that's good. So, if we were on Vanilla Agility, I know we're not, but if we were on Vanilla Agility, we would have some words. Um, this is one of the fastest and highest magic attack spots in the game. So this is a potentially almost soft locky spot, but without Vanilla Agility, uh, throw a curse ring on that middle character and you are good to go it's going to do 10k even with just one reflected and yeah there use that excal good night goodbye and he's taken care of and another objective completed all right this yeah this seat's this seat's going pretty quickly obviously if moon's haunted that's the way it sort of goes but uh it's pretty interesting to see uh you know the way everybody's routing and stuff and we're you know, getting pr getting pretty close to having some folks uh, actually complete all the objectives on the stream here, so that's kind of interesting. I think a couple of people have uh, two objectives done, maybe three. Yeah, this this makes Gambit's play actually look better and better. Because like, what else do we have left to see? I think it would just be the Feymarsh bosses. <laughs> uh, it, and okay, so Inadel showing off some jump using some uh, jump tech. I mean, is the jump king after all? Uh, jumping outside of the map to trigger a return tile, and yeah, it, it, it'll save a couple couple seconds here and there. Uh, Anadel is going now. It looks like Anadel only has the Fame Arch bosses left, so we're just gonna level up the party in anticipation of a couple of rather nasty boss fights um, and hopefully get the darkness crystal that gambit just got so we know for our last required item it is that regular milan uh, and so i think we'll say gambit's is pretty much just needs that hook and after we get the hook we're good to go Yang at cannot Yang at Leviathan can be a little tricky though, even with Cecil. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, regard the look at that two thousand damage to pour up, just crumpled. Yeah, and and those kicks like you can't even throw up an illusion; those will go right through. So, 
but he's gonna get the ouch. Oh wow, and the only one alive. But he manages to do it. That's pretty Im Yeah. <laughs> Why can't your kick do this much damage when you're actually kicking on my team, Yang? Come and an awesome, totally useless Leviathan. Oh, Is well. this even? Right, yeah, you get the Leviathan summon. Yep, yeah, Dathis. Ah, uh, what are you doing? All right, so Gambit's just missing the hook, and then he's good to go. Um, and it looks like everybody else, or I'm sorry, Cossack needs the darkest crystal that is at uh, the Asura spot. And Adele needs both of those, but is heading into the Fey March now, so we'll at least get one of them right out the way. And I think Landheart is in the same boat as uh, Anadale and Cossack, or I'm sorry, just Anadale needs that hook and the Darkness Crystal. Yeah, but things are wrapping up pretty quickly, so this is, this is super interesting. Sometimes it's cool to see faster seeds. I know people kind of complain and like to see something that's longer, but uh, I find, you know, the nice thing about free enterprise is like different flag sets just create so many different things. Different seeds create so many different things, and you can have, you know, a seed that only runs an hour. You can have two hours, and there's all sorts of variations, and it's so interesting. I love, I love the nuance of all that stuff. I love how different everything can be, and how every single run is totally new. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I I could tell you from experience the most stressful seeds for me personally in a race. They're not the Kanazo at the hook or CPU at the elements. It's a super unexpected fast jet seed where all of a sudden you have go mode 15 minutes in and you're like, uh, what now? Yeah, because you know everybody else is also in the same boat, obviously. Everybody's got the same speed, so, you know, you might be going fast, but so is everyone else. There's actually, if you ever want to see an example of that, uh, check out Game 3 of Penguinator vs. Rivers in the Football Gauntlet for a very good example of how super stressful getting all your requirements done early can be. Yeah, no doubt. And of course, I remember, what was it, the, um, what was the tournament called where we had the different things and there was the, the, the apple seeds and those like, World Series like, of Free Enterprise. Yeah. And those are like 15 minute runs because you just go and get the apples and like, you know, quad nine all your characters with hit points and go on take on Z and you didn't need to do anything. All right, Gambit's wrapping up his Fabul right, action right there. Anadel is going to get the Darkness Crystal. We'll probably still check Yang because you're missing the hook and you have Cecil in the back row and a bunch of levels. So while he will punch and kick like a truck, uh, shouldn't have too much of an issue here. I always find it hilarious to see one of the other features. We talk about push B to jump where you can jump over tiles and skip battles and all that. You can also, every character can push B to use Kane's jump command in battle. And the animations on both the way down and the way up are just so funny. Yeah, and, that, and those jumps are so satisfying. And they do the same thing. It's double damage. And the nice thing is... Uh, if you're in a spot where auto attack, like regular attack commands will cause um, counters, uh, the jump will skip it even for everybody. So you can actually cheese some bosses a little bit easier and push beat it. All right, Cossack is uh, going to actually take on the Kanazo fight. So we'll have the pass here. Kanazo, uh, the party that Cossack's rocking at this fight has ton of, well not ton but significant amount of hp and yeah wave wave is not going to be an issue this fight will be over pretty quickly anadale gets his darkness crystal to see if he immediately takes on yang or might go back and save yeah i'm guessing he's going back to save just to you don't want to lose that not oh actually yep yeah, just oh exiting oh because he already took on Wait a minute, did he take on oh, Yang Oh, did he first? do Yang yeah, first? He must have done Yang first, that's, yeah. Because there's no way he would just split on that, I don't think. That's, that, well, that spot on the wrong boss is something that you, <laughs> you would. But, okay, Anadel is actually going to do a Keyless Tower first. Now, the tower is one of the best examples of how push B to jump. It, you can save a bunch of time here and there. You jump on this roof, yep, there's one, so... Take a good look at how Anadel routes the tower. I, I've, this is one of my favorite dungeons to watch. Someone who is very familiar with jumping go, how much t 
time you save here. Yeah, push B to jump really brought a new meta into this game, uh, you know, for people that were really interested in it, because there is a whole new set of things you can jump over and everything, and like, you know, it, uh, people scramble and found a whole bunch of new pathways to make things a lot faster, and some of the ninja moves that they make to go up and down uh, dungeons is, is kind of amazing to watch, to be honest. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Cossack got hooked from Dwarf Castle. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so that's that's our that's that's kind of the big spot that we're missed that we uh, our other three runners are missing. Um, Gambit did raise the big whale. Well, let, let's see if he makes the decision to go moon and uh, I, I think anyone who's gonna leave something on Earth and head to the moon might actually full clear the moon first because i it's a totally sensible play the moon has you have seven key item checks there so percentage wise going moon is the best way to go but we know that dwarf castle has the one item that gamut's looking for and not only that uh moon does have a required ribbon altar so you know that you always want to do what's required, which is you know a, definitely a good thing to do. But yeah, it would really stink if he goes and does does the required ribbon altar and then full clears the moon. So we shall see what happens here. On the plus side, we may get to see some pretty spicy bosses on the moon. Uh, and Gambit doesn't have the adamant armor yet. That's yeah, that's another thing, because the pink tail is behind the rat tail, it's behind the hook, it's behind the neck bone, it's behind the cheekbone, you know, uh, not going to have the adamant armor, so uh, a lot of bosses you might otherwise be able to cheese, and we're always, well, it could be up here grinding as well. Uh, if you get 10 key items here, if you go into uh, the LST or Cave Bahamut, and with a siren summon the King Ryu fight at 10 key items, if you just do a standard life glitch, you're looking at 100k XP. If you get nice two strats, you're looking at 240k. And that really just one of those is all you need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, th those are super nice and super quick in terms of getting XP if you only like need one of them. Uh, I know I know eggs are pretty good, but just using one of those sirens, you can get a ton of XP with with uh, what? It's like 180,000 if you do the life glitch, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 180 with uh with the standard, and then if you get the nice two strats, which you know, so you get a double life glitch, you get 240k. Um, I I think if, if you can reliably set up the double life glitch, I think it's actually faster to do uh, the dragon fight. But if you can't, I think if you have a setup to make sure your character that's going first uh, can one hit KO the eggs, then I think eggs is a little faster. Uh, but they're both really good. And the other thing is, you know, if you're going up here and you're already kind of putting this in your routings, then it kind of makes sense because you can kind of go through and get those dragons and then go ahead and, you know, finish up what you need to do on the way. All right, so Lanehart's wrapping up Luka Key. Uh, gonna head right in there i this, i always say the the real nope rope is that one rope on the third i think it's the third or fourth floor when you go across the bridge and it takes you to the spot where the treasure chest is but you never actually need that chest <laughs> so you lose like five seconds from going over a rope tile we'll find a package there which you know we, we don't need more characters uh but we'll see you know this is an objective so there we go Exactly, it's required, so it's all good. But yeah, that Wyvern's gonna be smacking some people in the face. I think Commander actually wiped on Wyvern earlier, so hopefully he's got uh, the battle speed set up for this now. Oh, uh, there, okay, that makes sense. Might might not have actually, just might not have uh, got on the first try. And Wyvern's one of those bosses where, you know, you, you most runners will stay on battle speed one or battle speed two, just to try to get through each, uh, each fight as fast as possible, and Wyvern is one of those where even with a correct agility setup, you still want to be on a lower battle speed, so uh, most everybody is going to take a wipe on their first view of Wyvern, and Anadel looks like I be hitting go mode pretty well, Anadel, or Cossack is in go mode, um, Anadel is just about there. 
Awesome. Yeah, we are seeing some speed going here, so we are going to be getting some uh, butt fights pretty soon. Not going to preempt that too much, but uh, yeah, this is pretty exciting. This is pretty close race going on here, too, especially between Antidale and Dr. Cossack, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. Yeah, the admin armor is going to make a lot of the potential boss fights that we see um, on the moon not quite as spicy. Um, but there's still there's still a few that that can that don't care about admin armor and can still hurt. Um, Cossack is taking on this fight, uh, the Leviathan fight. I don't think Cossack has any more requirements, but we'll get some levels out of this and it's you know a fast fight so it, it's kind of like the inverse of what i was saying before is that sometimes you know you see a fight you need but you don't want to take it because it's going to be too slow on the other hand you get a fight that you don't need but it's only going to take you like 30 seconds to get you know 80k xp it it, it you can it's totally justifiable there. totally especially because you've got a foo so that's going to be extra spells. I believe uh, one of the spells he got was Berserk, so that's going to be a little bit helpful in terms of uh, setting stuff up and fighting. That's uh, okay. and, and 100 extra XP for Fu as well, so, you know, that's definitely double. Yeah, I had totally forgot about the whole Fu spell aspect, so now it makes even more sense. Free fight to get Fu Berserk? Yes, please. Uh, is going to see that Excal I don't think is going to be able to afford the 190k and I don't think Cossack took the Zot fight so it doesn't actually have an Excal uh, Anadel's getting Ghost Hand though I love that Ghost Hand so yeah one of the things about this is you've got a little uh, hand that's the Golbez hand in the uh, uh, vanilla game and there are a couple different color variants I think red and blue are, are most of the bosses, but uh, there's like CPU has a gray hand, and then the best one is Mist has that ghost hand. I love it. I don't know how that got put in, but it's pretty amazing. <laughs> we need a, a dash hand flag to have different colored hand, flag, uh, hand sprites there. <laughs> so Anadel's good to go. I think we might see Anadel head straight to Mesidia and follow Cossack up. Yeah, I think he's ready. I mean, he's got the Excal, he's got an Adamant, like, there's almost nothing left to do at this point. You just go in, you gotta take out the Ribbon Spot, and boom, you know. Alright, Leonhardt looks like is also on the right track, heading to Fame March. We'll be taking on probably both boss fights here, because as we saw from the other two runners, having a back row Cecil in pretty adequate levels, this fight isn't going to be too bad. Uh, a Gambit as powered up the party significantly so the question or that gambit's gonna face is does he go straight down to the moon or does he finish off earth first that's toughy well hopefully you know we'll see what happens but hopefully uh he sticks on earth and, and takes care of business here but who knows all right and Del's gonna turn to that rat tail we probably get the best thing he could possibly get from this turn in and that's a pink tail leading to an ad yeah anytime you see an adam it's just like oh hey everything becomes free this is kind of fantastic <laughs> <laughs> nowadays it's kind of like what is this thing and what do i do with it because we we're so used to playing with adamants off yeah, I mean, the thing about it is Adamant's kind of, I mean, it's interesting. They they definitely break the game in some in some interesting ways, make things like a lot easier when you get one. And every now, the nice thing is everyone has to get one here. So everyone's going to get that. You know, they might somebody might get it earlier. But um, yeah, usually when when you have uh, other competitions and stuff like football gauntlet and such, uh, you always have Adamant's turned off because that's such a game breaker that you don't want that kind of thing in a game usually so <laughs> lord bob reed brings up an interesting point I, a question i want to ask you as we as we wait for a uh, uh, cossack to make his trip down to the moon you see an x cal in a store it's 150k you don't have uh uh you're rocking a light sword with cecil do you sell the adamant armor for an x cal that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, what would the what would the strat like? 
Are you stronger with light plus adamant, or are you stronger with Excal plus whatever? I would say the survivability of the adamant would would supersede that, but I could see I could see it either way, really. That's it, it, it would it would be the first time I've seen somebody sell adamant armor, but it's also the first time I could think of where I'd see a scenario where it's actually a viable thing to do, because I I I, I think Excal with you know even any standard gear is probably going to be a damage upgrade and you would save time in the z fight but you would also make things a lot more dangerous going into this fight yeah absolutely and you're and that would also make the ribbon boss who we don't know yet what that is uh definitely a, quite a bit harder I, I, now that we talk about it, I kind of hope we see somebody. <laughs> I kind of hope that actually comes up, but I believe the rest of our runners all have Excals, so might not be a big thing. Gambit, all right, so Gambit is heading back to. hadn't actually done the Luka key yet, so I should have probably thought of that beforehand. But yeah, so he's going to get the Luka key done. I don't think I, I could see leaving the tower. I'm not sure you would leave Dwarf Castle, but that that's going to be the big question for Gambit. And looks like we got the boss at the ribbon spot is Leviathan, and that's kind of free. Yeah, it's not too tough though. The waves are not as bad as Oko. You always get a single wave, so that's only 25% of your health. Um, I don't know what the magic in this spot is, but you don't get punched. You get the ice two cast on you, and Honestly, given the... Oh, wow. Well, one, yeah. Adamant Armor makes that a one damage hit. Uh, but yeah, Leviathan's going to get crumpled. Yeah, magic in this spot is not that great. Uh, so those, those Ice 2s are, are not going to be an issue. They, they, we might actually have had a scenario where uh, selling the Adamant Armor <laughs> might have actually been faster. Uh, uh, now, Cossacks... We'll, might still have some leveling to do. His Rose is only sitting about 1,200 HP, uh, and you know we've got Fu, so you know Fu can handle the primary healing if that's the case. But the main point being, party levels aren't necessarily quite at Zeramus ready yet, so Cossack will still have some leveling to do. Won't be able to walk straight into Z. Uh, so it might save Gambit actually a little bit of time if he heads straight into Dwarf Castle after this. Yeah, that'd be real good if he if he ends up doing that. Um, yeah, I don't. I guess I'd be curious to see what Doctor Cossack tries to do in terms of you know if he if he tries to throw in some uh, some a little bit of King Ryu grinding here. Uh, but he does still have an objective because he still has to. What is it that he needs to do? Uh, oh, did he not get the crystal? Am I? He didn't get the crystal. Yeah, that, there's still an objective left, so he must have left something on earth because it looks like he has all the items i think so i'm not sure what thing he did not do oh have our tracker bursic badger giving us the 411 here dr cossack hasn't done the sealed cave yet oh no wow and now it looks like he's taken on bosses and stuff does he oh well this might just be for leveling purposes i don't know uh but yeah i'm wondering if he, he realizes that that's what's what he needs to do or i'm not sure Also, I see Anadel got the tower key. Was it the good old vanilla tower? Yeah, we're, oh, yeah, because that's right, he did the top of tower. That must have been, uh, actually, yeah, I totally missed. Yep, vanilla tower key. Ah, Dathis, you can. That always drives me nuts in a race when I see a vanilla tower key. Like, uh, as somebody who often views that, I love it. But yeah, I understand. As somebody who actually plays it, not so hot. All right, so Anadel I, is okay. So I see his Rosa is sitting. It looks like forty-seven. So Anadel might be pretty much ready to go after getting the two hundred k from from the ribbon spot. And Leonhardt's going to be right on everybody's tail here. Um, is now taking on the Dwarf Castle spot. That's the last item required. There. Yeah, everybody's just like neck and neck here this is an exciting fight this is really really good and we got a lot of people that are off that are not on stream i'm not sure how many racers there are but uh you know we might hear from one of them finishing first so this is going to be a really tight race i'm really excited to see how this goes
Yeah, we've got 18 entrants. Um, so yeah, that and Anadel is probably about 10 minutes away from clearing the seed. Uh, Hasak, yeah, he might be doing this just to get the levels. Um, especially if if I uh, didn't catch the sirens yet, that that would that would explain. Oh yeah, I didn't see if he saw sirens, but yeah, I mean he's, he's powerful enough to crush all these bosses, so it's not too bad, but. Obviously, the sirens are a lot quicker in terms of leveling and stuff. But, I mean, the thing is, he does have a pass, so if he has to go back and do Luca, you know, he can just use the pass and run right into Z. Right. Yeah. The rewards for the D-Lunar spot were a glass hat and a heron robe. Neither of those are things you will want to equip for the Zeremus fight, so... Yeah. Big help. There's no... Uh, Physical attack, so you, the glass helm is good for physical attack, so that's useless. And then the heroin rope is something you really only want early game because it does some nasty uh, uh, negatives to your spell casting, but it's super good with bows. But you don't really need that in the end game, so. Yeah, there the would be items that would have been great to have 45 minutes ago. Now, not so much. So it looks like we've got Antidale on Leviathan. Leviathan. I don't know. Should I say Leviathan? Do I do I go Leviathan? I mean, I think they might have just run out of letters in the spot. Oh, I'm sure they did, but it's still, you know, it's still kind of hilarious. Even now, when I when I still see Leviathan on here, I I, I start to think of the uh, the FF14 Leviathan Primal theme. It's so good. Uh, don't even get me started about FF14 music. I could I could go on about that. That's such good music. And it looks like yeah, Commander is on his way to get the hook, so he will get the rat tail completed as well. And I think that would put him in go mode as well. So yeah, he would I think just need to go up to the moon and take care of Ribbon. I'm not sure what his levels look like just yet. So we've had a required ghost hand and a required music. Yes, please. <laughs> Great scene. And it looks like Anadel, having got the uh, crystal, is now going to be head down to the Z fight. And that makes brings up a very important question that we have to ask toward the end of every free enterprise race. And what would that question be? Well, you know, we get to see uh, there's there's multiple sprites uh, that are replacing the original Z Zeroma sprite that many of them were created by the amazingly talented Scala Kitty. But we will see what happens. Uh, but the most important question we have now is whose butt are we going to jump kick tonight? <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> that, if, if only we had like a... Well, I guess Yang is technically jump kicking unless he's on uh, Mauro deals, in which case he is also breaking the laws of physics. Um, looks like we've got a curse ring set up as well here. So he's got the party set up in such a way where Crystal, Zerk, Zerk, throw a silk web just to. It'll slow him down a little bit, won't have a, that much of an effect with two RA1 Zerkers. And then pretty much good to go we might this i think the damage will be a little short for a one big bang but i don't think we'll see a, a black yeah no question there's so much damage going on oh whoa what is this that's amazing i have no idea what it is though fire emblem fate smifty is saying oh no wait this Oh yeah, it's the final final boss of Fire Emblem. Really, it's a Fire Emblem boss. That's fascinating. But that is a super cool sprite. Holy goodness! I love these gigantic sprites that are so big they can, like fill up the screen. They're just fabulous. I will defer all Fire Emblem expertise to Smape D. So if he says his Fire Emblem fates. There we go. He can tell us whether or not this is a super annoying boss in the actual game. But yeah, that sprite, oh, it takes up the entire... It, it, it's like he just wants to walk up to his party and... 
<laughs> yeah, like, the, you know, usually you just, you see the walk up and attack motion and the characters are like 20 feet away from each other. And now like, Cecil's literally hitting him with the sword. So it's pretty hilarious. And there's a big bang, but yeah, no, I mean, Rosa's gonna, oh yeah. No, Rosa didn't even go down already right, because it's nerfed. But yeah, no, this is basically over in, in a minute or two here. So we may see a pretty uh, big wave of Dot Dunce coming in uh, pretty soon. We do have a first place finisher. Dark Kobold does finish the race in first place with a score, with a score, with a time of one hour, nine minutes and 23 seconds. So congrats to Dark Kobold taking first place in this. Yeah, GG. Annadale is definitely looking like he might take second. I mean, who knows? He might get sniped, but uh because everybody's real close here, but we're going to see. It looks, looks like it is going to do a little bit of hybrid stretch. Generally, when you're around RA1, you want your melee attackers to do be doing around 9 to 10k to ensure that you're only going to see one big bang and get a phase push both times. Uh, the first phase push happens when you do about 60 or about 40 some, uh, thousand some odd damage, and then he refills his health. Um, it also resets the timer as far as whether or not he's actually going to shake, shake, and then, you know, do a nuke, which is why sometimes you might see him actually shake twice in a row, as opposed to throw a big bang out there. Uh, with a strong RA1 party, getting into the first phase push is, is relatively easy. It's the second one where you have to do about 60k damage that can be a little tricky, and sometimes an extra reflected white and an extra reflected nuke will get that off the table. The downside to that is that if you're just short you run the risk of the combo platter making an appearance oh yeah get a big bang followed by a medio and by the way uh second place we have zilch with a time of one hour 10 minutes 55 seconds gg and we have antidale in oh <laughs> i didn't I, the brain the <laughs> timing is hard so you can see we did see his big bang number two Sometimes I'm sure we've all experienced where you have that cure for Q and Zeromus is just like, no, nah, I'm gonna throw a Meteo out there, hold this. Anadel does not have to deal with that, does get Zeromus down, finishes in third place with a time of one hour, 11 minutes, and 12 seconds. Just one second off of a 1 1 1 1 1 1. Oh man, that would have been pretty awesome. But yeah, GG Anadel, first on stream to finish. And yeah, it's pretty hilarious actually seeing like the sprite, which is obviously a little cut off because it had to fit on the screen kind of going down. You can see like the missing top. So we'll probably get uh, Anna Dell in here for an interview in just a short moment. Uh, looks like Gambit did not actually take on Dwarf Castle after Luka Kia went straight to the moon. So unfortunately, might be looking at a full clear pretty soon. Um, as taking on the elements spot. Cossack did make the return back to Earth. So I assume, yep, down he goes, is going to be heading to the Luka cave, maybe. Oh, nope, it's still, so he still might have forgot about it. He's gonna head into the tower. Uh, we'll get a tower key uh, for his trouble. So we'll have that out of the way and then probably get the Luka key done there. We'll have the pass, so we'll be able to save time there. Uh, Commander Wainhart is taking on Leviathan right now. And I believe that's all he will need for uh, go mode and head right to the Z fight after that. Yeah, does he have? I didn't see what his hit points. What are his level? Um, he's a little light on the hit points. Like he could probably try and do it, but that might be tight. It depends on how much DPS he's got. Because if he does, if he only gets the one nerfed Big Bang, he can do it. <laughs> I just if you saw at the very beginning. Um, Commander Lanehart's character name is lined up with a, uh, what I believe to be a Spaceballs line um, saying that evil triumphs over good because good is dumb. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's hilarious. Um, has made for some interesting uh, lines when reading the party members <laughs> here and there because now dumb that evil. <laughs> and it looks like we've got Poitrac in uh, fourth place with a time of 1 hour 12 minutes 59 seconds. Chokosura right behind him with 1 hour 13 minutes 23 seconds. And Pixel Tamer in sixth place with a time of 1 hour 13 minutes 57 seconds. So GG's. 
generally, if you see a haunted moon and a darkness crystal at a Fey March boss, you'll get a pretty good chunk of runners uh, in the first eight. And it looks like we are joined by the Jump King himself. And Adele, congratulations on your second place finish. Uh, thank you. I think Silge edged me out first, so he took second and took third. But uh, it was a close race. Yeah, GG for being first on stream. Uh, how'd you feel about getting that X Cal relatively early? That was a that was a pretty spicy thing to find. I think it was on Earth Crystal. It's not. Yeah, that was very nice. Uh, well, already was pretty happy to see Sissel pop up in Baron Castle because I had the couple lightsabers and a defense sword but the upgrade was very well received. Was there any particular fight in there uh, from the seed that you had that, well, I guess the one challenging fight you had was probably the Kainazo at home. How do you feel that one? Um, felt okay about it. It was, uh, it was just a little bit awkward that I didn't realize Dark Knight Cecil had the perfect zero agility to really mess me up because uh, I wanted to do nuke and then lit so that I wouldn't take the one wave. Um, and having to go back a second time is probably what cost me uh, first place. Oh, goodness. I didn't realize you had the zero agility. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah, otherwise he wouldn't have gone first there. So uh, just unfortunate that DKC happened to go first right there because he got too many levels other places. <laughs> Though that's that silly Dark Knight Cecil anchor. Never can trust the guy. No. <laughs> uh, but I was also really happy I had left it on Battle Speed 3 for as long as I did, because otherwise I probably have to have a harder time with that Wyvern at Sealed Cave. So that worked out nicely overall. Yeah, that was one place where you definitely save time over the other runners on stream, where pretty much everybody else has taken a initial wipe to Wyvern, whereas you did not. And you know, we were even discussing how, you know, taking a wipe to Wyvern is fine because generally everybody else does. Uh, you were already on Wyvern Standard Time, so you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. You probably made up a good It might have been on Wyvern Daylight Time because I was still on Battle Speed 3. That's almost, right. But yeah, yeah, had just right. enough to get it off, so it worked out overall. It was, I think, overall a time save for the two or three fights I did on uh, Semi Wyvern Standard Time. So out of curiosity, like a uh, seed like this is pretty jet, obviously. Um, when you're doing this, like, what is the the pressure level you're feeling when you're starting to grab stuff and get, you know, get things ready for go mode and stuff? Are you feeling behind? Or are you feeling pretty good? Like, you know, what's the what's the thought prop? I felt that my routing was pretty good. Um, I didn't waste a lot of time like looking in chunks or anything. It was pretty pretty just clean and going through stuff. Uh, I felt a little bit bad about not peeking the boss at, uh, at Baron Inn because I could have had that edge immediately. Um, he had the starting uh, guy drum, and then Edge's parents were right there, so that could have been a little bit faster overall. And Edge, edge early would have helped just clear a couple things, thus just a skosh faster. But overall, the routing was pretty nice and clean, um, and. Uh, wasn't too worried about time too much. Uh, I just felt like someone could outplay me a little bit, but not by not by like five minutes or more. So that overall uh, wasn't too bad. And we had a team that did not like you weren't worried about levels. Oh yeah, you crushed everything. Once you how 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 hot was it to see that rat tail and you hand it in, you get a pink tail. Like that's that's got to feel pretty nice, especially I think you got that pretty early on, so you were pretty powerful. Uh, that was but, actually yeah. my go mode, was oh. getting, uh, the hook from the castle. So uh, it was really nice to see. I was kind of sad to see the adamants in Baron uh, Town and them just being so expensive that you just can't possibly afford them. Yeah, it's just uh, haunting you there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was nice to pick up, uh, to actually get one, though, and that definitely made uh, Z not a worry. Like, once you have Excal, Adam, and Cecil, you're just gonna be fine. Alrighty, well, do you have any uh, final thoughts on this uh, particular seed? As uh, looks like we have uh, one of our runners heading into the Z fight right now. Oh, it was a lot of fun, and the, the music was great. It was nice to actually be able to play music on a jump seed, which is so rare. Um, and uh, this was Gambit's uh, special flag set form because it was his birthday week. So happy birthday to Gambit, and uh, thanks for the really nice flag set.
It's a lot of fun. And of course, thank you all for doing the comms and tracking and restreaming. And thank you for, uh, you know, getting on the, the restream here. And, you know, thank you for participating and stuff. And you did excellent. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I, I thank you for, for everything. And it's pretty cool. Unfortunately for Gambit's birthday, this community race decided to give him a haunted moon that he has full cleared, uh, is now heading into Zot, uh, so is going to get the Excal, which is nice, but still missing that Dwarf Castle. So usually when we see a Dwarf Lich, we're like, oh, let's, let's hit Dwarf Castle right away. But with the Luka key and, you know, jumping and that Luka requirement, like you had mentioned earlier, Ground Flight, this is the spot where it's not really going to be as prioritized because you're gonna have to go through that spot anyway. So, yeah, but I, I can totally see putting off Dwarf Castle, like how you come to that conclusion. Uh, Cossack is heading into Luka Key, so uh, what I believe this will be pretty, a 17 out of 17. Uh, so we can get those out in chat very shortly. And Commander Lanehart is in the Z5 right now. Oh yeah, and he's yeah he's definitely got the hit points to survive now. I guess he must have gotten oh yeah because of the because the uh, the ribbon spot so that must have given him enough. Ooh, his edge at fifty one hit points just managed to. Yeah, Rosa in nineteen fifty and uh, Fuit at nineteen hundred. It's not a guarantee, and even with the adamant armor, um, adamant armor has stupendous physical defense its magic defense is only very good <laughs> I, it is but big bangs still hurt quite a bit so th there is still a risk here that a particularly nasty big bang would take out the, one of the white mages and sure enough uh foo is in full-on mop mode we'll see if he decides to actually get him up might okay i, I wasn't sure He's in the life potion or prioritize getting the party healed up as fast as possible might need a phase push though relatively soon oh and by the way while we were interviewing antidil we had uh seventh place x pancras i believe i said that right with a time of one hour 15 minutes 21 seconds we had twisted flax in eighth place with a time of one hour 17 minutes 21 seconds and we have tybalt finishing in ninth place with a time of one hour 18 minutes 30 seconds so gg to all king of the package boss uh, i think we also uh, did we cover chokosura finishing in fifth and pixel tamer finishing in sixth uh, if we didn't uh, chokosura uh, one hour 13 minutes 23 seconds pixel tamer one hour 13 minutes 57 seconds so ggs to all y'all Ooh, it rocks Ooh, but he's kind of dicey on those hit points is he gonna survive oh, it's, this is gonna be close this is gonna be close i i think a so. yeah <laughs> Whew, that's a close one. So yeah, GG. 10th place for Commander Leonhardt with a time of 1 hour, 22 minutes and 7 seconds, I believe. Yes, so GG. And you can see just like how tight this race is where the difference between, you know, 2nd and 10th was only 11 minutes. So this, this, this was a very close race where if you did, you know, a few extra spots, unfortunately, that's a lot of places. Um, so, uh, inversely, 10th place is really good job here because, you know, it's an hour 22. That, that's a fantastic time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no matter what place you get here, like, everybody's doing great and, and working really hard. And, you know, even if they make mistakes, it's all learning. It's all, you know, it's all good. Like, I, I just started playing and I make mistakes constantly, but everyone is a learning experience. So, you know, they're all doing really well, though. I mean, 700 races in, and I'll still make goofy mistakes. It it happens, man. It ain't nothing. Oh, it looks like we're about to get Commander Leonhardt into the uh, interview here. So that will happen shortly. And uh, Gambit is taking on Kainazo. So he's finally going to be getting uh, the hook, right? That's the hook spot. I, oh, no, no. The, the uh, Dwarf Castle was the hook spot. Oh, my bad. What was? Oh, that's right. The Kanazo was a pass. That's right. Yep. It was not actually necessary. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like we are joined by Commander Lanehart. Congratulations on your finish. GG's. Well done. Thank you. That was Jenny. Woo. Yeah, 
how'd you feel about that speed? Were you, uh, you know, getting it, getting pumped, like getting all that stuff done? Is it, you know, does it, does the pressure really feel like it's, it's, you know, kind of, kind of getting to you there? Or like, you know, I guess that's, yeah. How, how do you feel about, uh, you know, kind of getting these things super fast? Like, I definitely felt pumped at first. Getting the necessary key items, running down the checks. I took the one wipe to the wyvern there, but got through it reasonably well, I thought. Felt really good not skipping over Dwarf Castle and not seeing any duns until I was already on the moon and marching down to the ribbons. At that point, I'm still pumped. Of course, then all the duns start coming in and then the pressure starts to yeah i it's it's one of the, this was one of those seeds where the darkest crystal was in such a spot that players aren't as likely to check that it kind of led funneled people into clearing most of earth and with a haunted moon you're gonna get a pretty good clump uh right at the top uh but i mean you handled it absolutely fantastically uh how did did you have any thoughts as far as like how you're gonna handle your early game routing any differently as opposed to a standard jump seed where you can kind of skip everything? Um, not too different because of all of the necessary key items for the objectives. I have a problem sometimes if I get too crazy with my push B to jump routing that I'll do silly things like fade antlion. Also, the treasure and shop settings were such that chests and shops in one area weren't particularly better than the other and for me that takes away a lot of the incentive to do the quick hook route and get underground yeah that's a very good point a lot of times you'll see people will take that quick hook route to get the sirens in the gated shops in this case they could have been anywhere so yeah and we're actually rewarded by getting a magma key and not even having to dive that. The hook character, I believe, was Yang, so it wasn't anybody that anyone was super excited. Or hook Sid, was I'm sorry. Sid, yeah. yeah, that party did not need a Sid. That party was just... That was the one thing early that did deviate me a little. When I peeked the inn and saw a ninja, I'm like, I want that, but all I have are two white mages, so... Very early on in the back of my mind is, do I have enough power to go for the end? Do I have enough power for, to go for the end? And I was thrilled to see Edge's parents as the second boss. Now, how do you feel when you're trying to route, especially like Baron Inn, which is kind of difficult because that first boss is obviously like 400 hit points, no big deal, and you see it, but you don't know what the second boss is going to be. So how do you feel like trying to decide like when is the time to actually check that out? Yeah, that's exactly it. It's the second boss. You don't know. This time it was King Queen Eblon, but there's no telling if it's going to be rude Dark Imps or something, which for a weak party can be very rude in that spot. It, for a weaker character, I would leave it till much later, but with Edge, it's very much uh, taking a risk to get a reward. I wanted basically enough damage to deal with the 4,000 hit points there. So once I saw the, I believe my move that I made is once I finally got the Elven bows. Once I had Elven bow characters and decent arrows, I said, all right, let's go give this a shot. Maybe whatever it is, is something we can shoot down real quick. Yeah, the speed gave you characters, um, but didn't necessarily give you characters and matching weapons. Uh, in short order like you got the defense sword early but it was a little while before you even saw Kane or Cecil whereas Edge was there behind two free bosses but we didn't really see a whole lot of really good ninja swords either no I, yeah oh sorry go ahead I was just gonna say that I think there was a Masamune on sale somewhere that somebody bought but yeah uh, that's, yeah. that's a lot of money yeah poor Edge um I was busy looking at shops early and saw that crystal sword and then later on saw the adamant in baron and decided i was done looking at shops i had finally had to give in and try and find some life potions or cabins but from that point on i was committed to finding and selling everything i could to first go to crystal sword and then get some adamant armor of 
course, we all hit go mode too early to find enough money for that, but Pink Tail was in a very nice spot. Yeah, you were guaranteed pretty much to have an adamant armor going into uh, at least the Zeramus, if not the Moon Fight, which I believe ended up happening for most of our runners, in, in which they got that adamant. And Leviathan in that spot isn't terribly threatening anyway, but I mean, with an adamant armor. No, yeah, Leviathan there is not going to be an issue. The adamant was more telling me. Okay, I'm a little more ready for Z. I don't quite need the hit point levels on my Paladin that I normally would. And I was torn after I took that ribbon. I looked at the numbers and thought about taking a shot, but decided, no, nope, I'll just pop a siren on some gold dragons and make sure I get through this. Yeah, even despite that, your your hit points were a little on the low side. Obviously, you know you got that uh, that medio and uh, didn't have a whole lot left at that point. Uh, obviously, you know, adamant can often, uh, you don't, you don't actually get hit by the medio, so you're probably relatively safe, but did you feel, like, pretty nervous at that point, because, you know, it, it, you were starting to get hit with medios and, and, and running out of hit point? Uh, I definitely felt nervous. I, um, had not been counting my damage and didn't realize I was coming up on the medio, and everyone looked good and I thought I'd try and get cute and see if I could get four or Quint Zerk going on and then I saw the rocks hit and I knew that Zerk was still cute and I'm just thinking, oh, Commander, this is your pride coming at you. But fortunately, I was not punished. Yeah, you did excellent. And by the way, just a quick aside, uh, Dr. Kosick uh, on stream just finished as well. He got 11th place with a time of one hour, 30 minutes and 17 seconds of so GG to him. All right, so it looks like we'll be getting Cossack in here in relatively short order, I think. Um, any last words on this uh, seed or this race in general? Just thank you, Gambit, for coming up with flag set. It was a lot of fun, a nice twist on push B to jump. Thank you, Flurry and Groundflyer, for taking care of things in the booth, and Smate D and Bursic Badger for handling stuff behind the scenes. Can't have a people to make it wrong. And thank you for being on the restream. Thank you for playing. Anytime. And looks like Gambit is about to start his Z fight right now. We see uh, levels are not going to be an issue for this party when he got Rosa at 2700 HP. That and Yang has 5200 hit points. Good grief. <laughs> fun, fun fact. Uh, the game did not intend for Yang to reach a high enough level, so it doesn't actually give him hit points past uh, level 60, so he sits at level 6,000. Uh, it looks like Cossack is going to pass on the interview perfectly cool. I uh, did a good job, fantastic job, Like especially when you consider he basically full cleared the moon and still came like with, with that time did a fantastic job so you can totally be proud of that run nothing, nothing to be ashamed of there yeah absolutely ggs to him you know yeah doing having to clear that whole moon and still ended up with his time is, is really impressive so unfortunately i i don't think we're gonna have that much drama with gamut zero's right given his levels um one, one nice thing about Forum is that if you happen to have a seed where you're clearing a whole bunch of stuff at 10 key items, um, at level 57, seven, she naturally gets 28 agility, so she makes a really good anchor. Um, granted, it's a little more applicable in seeds where you tend to do a giant grind, but in this case, you don't have to worry about any cursed ring shenanigans or anything like that. You can just go in there, zerk your party, and have a good time. Yeah, you love you love entering a Z fight when you just got these numbers and you're just like throw throw down the Zerks and just like put the controller down and just watch and just enjoy. It's it's a great feel. I I'm not sure if he had picked up Bakai or not, because I was kind of wondering if there was a chance we'd see this legendary Quint I keep hearing about. Yeah, Quint is amazing. But yeah, between reflected holy spells and 
Excal, Cecil, Edge, Yang. Yeah, the, the, the Zeromus is a little bit overmatched here. I think the question is really going to be, are we going to see another big... Honestly, I doubt it, but... Yeah, 7k, yeah. <laughs> Not going to be that much of an issue here. And, and yeah, getting that Excal is going to be super useful. I, I'm still, it, it's still kind of racking my brain if you don't have the Excal, do you sell the Adamant Armor for it just for the Z fight? Um, yeah, there's rocks. We did not see another big bang and oh, Do a kamikaze damn it. Do a kamikaze for the fans. Come on I don't even think he could get it down in time if he tried But yeah, <laughs> I was open At least he got Rosa cheering though. There, there you go, you go. <laughs> And the crack boom GG Gambit. So he comes in 13th place with a time of 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 51 seconds. Yeah, that, that's nicely done. Um, again, he also full cleared the moon and made the percentage play of the six moon spots, or seven key items, versus the two he left on Earth. And, just didn't work out. Sometimes that's how randos get. It looks like we are joined by Gambit. Congratulations on your finish. Uh, unfortunately, I guess what the seed decided to give you for your birthday was a haunted moon. Well, I mean, it was required in the fact of the ribbon room, but yeah, no, I 100% I outmetted myself. Um, I was finishing up Luca when I first saw uh, Doug Hummel in first place about to finish and thought, oh, huh, maybe I should check the moon freebie. Maybe that's where it is. And decided to go run that. And yeah, with the exception of that required thing, it was completely haunted, wasn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. And by the way, happy birthday. Uh, although I don't know if it's literally today, but... Um, out of curiosity, you are the one who uh, set up the seed for your birthday, I guess. And uh, what do you think about, you know, actually having run it? What do you think about how this how this works for you? You know, do you think it's a pretty cool redux on the uh, push B to jump stuff? Are you, you know, do you think it's an interesting kind of way to, to, to do the jump stuff, but then also have to take out the bosses? What, what's your thoughts on on how this all worked out? Well, first time enough, I thought of some. I wanted to think of something that's, you know, press me to jump breaks in so many ways. It's so much fun. What can I do to make it where you can still break it, but you have to go back and complete what you broke? Uh, which is wh where I kind of came up with with the objectives we see uh, need to be done. So, uh, hence why I, I named it. You thought you could skip me. It's everything you can skip. You can skip the twin harp, um, even though with the break the spell, you, there's still a little bit of a skip you can do there. Uh, by completing the civil cave, the ribbon room, and then uh, with trading the rat tail, it was an issue of normally in press to jump, you don't need the hook, you can just jump straight into the underground. By trading the rat tail, you are required to find the hook. So, can't be a hookless seed. Yeah, totally. And, and yeah, this has been an exciting uh, exciting flag set to watch because, you know, there's there's been a lot of action. Uh, and of course, you know, since everything was on Earth, things were super jetty. Um, what did you feel about the speed of this, you know, in terms of getting everything really quick, you know, did, did you feel like you were uh, doing pretty well early on, like ahead of the game? What was your sort of thoughts on your uh, your process and your routing? I felt really good, especially going underground, getting the Magma Key from, from Edward, going underground and being able to, to one-shot Fey March, getting the Pan and the Darkness Crystal in, in one go. Uh, I felt like I was, if not in the lead per se, but pretty dang close and then i just kind of let it all slip away for me i mean that that those baron in bosses though that play you made in the beginning i know i i was like i saw the cpu and i'm like i have a guy and and then i went into the baron shop uh after doing my baron text and saw the like, grimoires were for sale and i'm like if i get a lucky grimoire roll i can probably take care of whatever's in that second spot and edge is there, and having an early edge in this seed would be great. Let's go ahead and try this. 
God, the Grimoire off in the CPU, and it ended up being King Queen Evelyn, which was completely free anyway. And I was like, well, I still got the Grimoire, but at least I got an Edge. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for Edge there. Like, he's hanging out with his parents, and then you go and kill his parents, and then he comes and joins your party. That seems kind of strange, but you know. <laughs> Oh well, sometimes the rando going to rando is going to put you in weird places. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, I guess, I guess the the downside to that was that if somebody had decided to, we did have Run Runner do an early Zot check, and that gave foo. So you can kind of imagine, uh, especially getting Nuke at 1100, hurt the, hurt the advantage you would have gotten from an early edge, but I was such a fan of the play just going in there and hey let's let's see if we can get an early edge and sure enough it worked out yeah as soon as i as soon as i dove zot uh and saw that food i was like well that explains all these early finishes because an early food can do that for you especially you get nuke or quake early and it can just let a seed run away so it was what it was. I mean, I'm not mad. I'll, I'll take where I finished. And I had fun with it. it. It was really a fun idea for a flag set. It came out very well. Um, I thought it would be a little bit more trolly than it actually was. It actually wasn't too bad. And, and seeing these finishes all in the, the 1, 120, 130 ranges is, is very nice to see. Yeah, somebody who's kind of new to the push B to jump stuff, I've, I've only done a couple seeds with this. Um, seeing this kind of redux where you have to go back and do this stuff has been really cool. I think this... Uh, flag set is is really interesting. Like it, it kind of you know does does mix things up a little bit with the push B to jump. So I I think it's really cool. And uh, but yeah, thank you for you know coming up with it. And uh, thank you for racing. And I think you did a fantastic job. You know you everybody really did a fantastic job on the stream. It's it's been an awesome race. It was super fun to watch. And thank you for being part of that. Thank you guys for doing the commentary. Thank you Versic for doing the tracking. Thank you Spapey for putting it on and thank you everybody out there watching uh we appreciate every single one of you viewers who comes out and watches us week in week out uh whether it be here or on our channel or wherever wherever you might find us thank you for being here you guys are what make us want to race and want to uh get faster and show you guys a good time so thank you for being here well thank you and yeah i believe that is going to pretty much wrap things up as far as this community race those we do community races every monday and friday uh friday at seven o'clock pacific 10 eastern and monday at i want to say it's five o'clock pacific you you'd think i'd race in enough of these things I'd yeah that. that's that's correct okay. yes yeah five o'clock pacific eight o'clock eastern there are also three uh racing clubs uh underground racing club on tuesday Mercedes Jumping Club, if you love this jumping, those are on Wednesdays, and Lunar Racing on Thursdays. So there's plenty of racing if you are interested. If you're interested in getting involved in Free Enterprise, be sure to check out the Discord. Uh, not to toot our own horn, but the community around this randomizer is absolutely awesome. And if you're wondering whether or not you should get involved, you should. It's awesome. Uh, definitely want to give a shout out to our... Uh, Restreamer Smapty and our tracker Bursic Badger, making sure everything ran perfectly smoothly. And yeah, Grand Flyer, you have any uh, final thoughts on this particular race? This was just fun to watch. And this was actually the first time I did comms, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, doing comms with you, Flurry. You've been really fun to ch chat with. I've chat with you in, in you know, in <laughs> your streams a couple of times that usually it's just, it's just typing. So it's interesting to be doing the talking, but um, this has really been cool and it's been fun uh, kind of being a part of this. So I love being a part of this community and I love giving back because it's, it's so amazing for me. So You're welcome, yeah. man. It, it, it's had a great time. Uh, we are going to toss a raid over to Silver Silverfire. Uh, they are running the seed of the week. So this is a spoiler warning for all y'all who are tuning in. If you haven't done the seed of the week and you do not wish to be spoiled, uh, you may want to turn back now because uh, we are going to be raiding Silverfire, who is running the seed of the week. Uh, so just be sure to say hi to them. And yeah, thank you guys for tuning in and we will catch you all next time. Take care. Peace out.